Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, today is July 9th, 2022. Uh, my name is Venkat, and uh, uh, this is our website, usvisastampinginmexico.com. So I'm going to cover a few topics. I, I'm going to provide latest updates about all the locations uh, of uh, Mexican uh, US-Mexico consulates. Uh, I'll inform what's going on at each location, which location you can choose based on your profile and all those details. Uh, I'll, I'll start with uh, what are the different locations in Mexico right now um, that are operating for these non-emergency or emergency appointments. Right. So uh, this is a website, usvisastampinginmexico.com and we've been providing service from past four years. By this December, we'll complete uh, four. So we can start with uh, these border locations and also these interior locations. So the primary question that uh, a lot of folks ask is, uh, do we need a Mexican visa to enter into Mexico? So if you have any Canadian visitor visa, Japan or Shenzhen or European or Australian passport holder or Singapore passport holder, then you don't need any Mexican visa or even any valid US visa like B1, B2, um, any visa, any US visa that is stamped in your passport. I-797 is not a visa, I-20 is not a visa. So if you have any visa that is stamped in your passport, then yes, you're good to uh, <clears throat> fly to Mexico, right? So which locations do you need to fly to go to these different, different locations? Uh, for interior locations, based on the visa that I told you guys, either Canadian, Japan, Shenzhen, European, or uh, any valid US visa. If not, then you need Mexican visa to fly to Monterrey or Hermosillo or Mexico City, or there is one more location, Merida and Guadalajara. Those five are interior locations. And these five are the US-Mexico border consulate locations where uh, New Orleans is nearby Laredo, Texas, Nogales is nearby uh, Arizona, Nogales, Arizona, and T1 is nearby San Diego, California. Metamoros is nearby Brownsville, Texas. Ciudad Juarez is nearby El Paso, Texas. So you fly to one of the US-Mexico border cities and then uh, you come to, uh, take an Uber to either uh, international bridge of these locations, like it might be like 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And then you uh, cross the international bridge. We'll share you the pictures about uh, how does the crossing looks like and all that. Uh, and also we'll connect you all with our drivers. They'll share the pictures who will be coming to pick you up and uh, we'll help you with uh, the local accommodation transportation in all the locations in Mexico. So uh, I like I told, so based on these locations, you can fly to US-Mexico borders and then come to the International Bridge, cross it, and our team will be waiting on the other side. You will know the driver based on the pictures that we'll share you. Uh, and the interior locations, yes, uh, you must need one of those visitor visa to uh, fly to Monterrey, Hermosillo, or Mexico City. In some cases, we had clients who got uh, US visa appointment dates by emergency appointments or non-emergency at either Monterrey, Hermosillo, or Mexico City but they were unable to get the Mexican visa or they don't have any other visitor visa. In that case, what you can do is you can fly to Laredo, Texas and then uh, enter into New Laredo and then our team can drive you to Monterey three hours to uh, uh, drive uh, drive by drive. And then once you finish the visa stamping in two to three days, you'll be able to fly to USA. The same way if you need to go to Hermosillo, then you'll be flying to Nogales border or Tucson, Arizona. And then our team can come and uh, the team over there they have a US visa so they can enter into USA, come to the Tucson airport and pick you up and drive you to uh, Hermosillo. You finish the visa stamp and you'll be able to fly back to USA. Let's say if you're going to Mexico City, Mexico City has opened a lot of non-emergency appointment dates in February and March uh, for uh, uh, April, May and June. And recently they've been opening uh, random slots for uh, July and August and September. So, but they're like very limited, not like they don't open bulk slots at a time, but uh, they've been opening random slots and we already have clients who booked the dates for July and uh, August. A lot of clients booked for May and uh, June. A lot of people already attended and they got the visa stamped. Uh, I'm going to talk about what is the passport return timeline as well. So these are all the different locations, how you can, and also to fly to Mexico City, you'll be, if you have a visa, you'll fly directly to Mexico City. If not, then you come to uh, Tucson, Arizona, and then our team can drive you to Hermosillo Airport from there, and then you take a local flight to Mexico City. That is one more option to fly to Mexico City in case if you have appointments over there. Also, in some cases, you might get ASC at different location, and then the visa interview at different different location. You can definitely choose that, provided you have you can you have enough time to fly between those locations. So. Uh, you can definitely choose any locations while ASC and uh, visa interview are different 
or in some cases you will uh, most of the case you will get the both appointments at some same location also there is another frequently asked question um, let's say if you do a google search about whether change of visa category stamping is possible in mexico or not uh, a lot of like 99% of the website says that it is not possible in mexico so yeah as per the books or as per the official website of us consulate it it is what it is right so that, that's what that's what it says but uh, since 2020 the pandemic started a lot of our clients attended for change of visa category for either first time f1 to h1b stamping or j1 to h1b stamping or uh, f1 to o1 or j1 to o1 you name it like even b1 to h1 b1 to f1 uh, different different visa categories got stamped in mexico uh, without any issue so so that opened up doors for a lot of uh, clients to come to Mexico, get their visa stamped through emergency appointment. Because from past two years since the pandemic started, it's just the emergency appointment that are happening. Uh, so uh, a lot of people took the chance to uh, attend for the change of visa category, and that information is in this uh, listed in this web in this page. A state change of state is appointment won't be stamping. No other website provides the information. Uh, uh, like we do, especially for the change of visa category. Anything that you see over the internet, they all have outdated information. So we gather all the visa interview questions and then post it here. That way you'll be able to keep yourself in the shoes of the person who attended visa interview for the change of visa category, the first time visa stamping in Mexico and all that. So that way you'll be able to take a step forward and attend the visa interview in Mexico. A lot of people know that Mexico does the visa renewals. Yes, that, that's been there from almost you know, 20, 30 years and a lot of people uh, already attended uh, for the same visa category renewal until 2019, uh, including me and our company uh, team, right? So we're all under the same impression that it Mexico only allows the same visa category, but 2020, since the pandemic uh, changed everything and uh, even change of visa category, folks started attending visa interviews, right? So I spoke about what is the, how, how do you need to fly to these locations, whether you need a Mexican visa or not. Um, if you're flying by land, if you're going through the land, mostly you don't need Mexican visa, but it's always recommended to take a Mexican visa that, that way it can help you in case if you need to fly out from there to any other location or in case of worst case scenarios, right? I'll, I'll speak about what is the 221Gs, uh, also what are the average timelines, what are the common 221Gs and what are the denial rates and the success rates and all that. So the next question is uh, how, um, what is the availability of the non-emergency appointments at this point of time? As per July 9, 2022, the first available appointments might be either in December of this year or January or February or March of 2023. So that's how it is. And then uh, our clients have been booking those. Uh, if they have any emergency, then they're just requesting emergency appointment and they're requesting for the, let's say, uh, right now it is a season for a lot of students to get their F1 visa stamp because their um, fall semester is going to start. So a lot of uh, clients come for their F1 visa stamping in Mexico. Uh, you name it from either B1 to F1 or F2 to F1 or F1 visa renewals, uh, whether they're doing a PhD, master's, or uh, even if they, let's say their H1B got, their H1B extension got denied and they need to, get back into status as soon as possible to F1. So a lot of people go to those uh, day one CPT universities and all that, and they come to Mexico for the uh, visa stamping to continue their stay in USA based on the valid uh, uh, valid visa or valid status, right? So let me talk about all different visa categories and the different locations. Uh, first is F1 visa. So F1 visa folks can apply for emergency appointments at Monterey location. Uh, which has been good from almost like a three to four years and uh, let's say 99% or 98%, they'll give the emergency appointment for the students. It doesn't really, I mean, whether your current, your class is going to start or currently your class are ongoing or if your class, I mean, if you're going to uh, start the classes in the next, uh, you know, one, one to two months or uh, if your class are still ongoing, then you can still request for emergency appointment. Also, if you're working on, CPT or OPT, still you can request for the emergency appointment for the students. So it's not usually in the list uh, of the emergency appointment, but uh, they, they do give, because due to the classes and the uh, all those things, they do give the emergency appointment for the students by default. The same applies for the doctors. So doctors can apply for emergency appointments at either uh, most, the first location I would say is the Tijuana, 
next one is uh, Monterey and New Laredo. Uh, Mexico City, yeah, you can still apply, but keep that as a fifth choice uh, because there are other better locations. And also you can apply even an emergency apartment at Merida, provided if you have any visa to fly to the, that interior location. So they're like different, uh, as per the different visa categories, uh, each location is good for uh, a specific visa category and all that. For F1 Monterey, for doctors, uh, like I said, Tijuana, Monterey, New Orleans, Merida, uh, later Mexico City, um, and different different locations. So coming to the uh, non, I mean, if someone is working for healthcare and then uh, directly for the healthcare, like I said, the doctors in the healthcare, they fall in the same category. If someone is an IT supporting healthcare, then you can request for um, emergency appointment at either Monterey, Merida, or New Orleans. So, uh, this is the list as per today, but this might change after a month or two months. So we keep doing these webinars every one month or uh, once in uh, you know, uh, two months. That way we'll keep you updated with all the latest details. Uh, so, <clears throat> so doctors can easily get emergency appointment, students, researchers, scientists, or let's say if you're on H4 visa and you're H4 EAD uh, or H4 extension by USCIS is taking time, then you can say that your uh, job, I mean, uh, you need your US visa to be stamped. So that way you can apply for your H4 EAD extension. Uh, that way you can get the EAD soon. That will help your uh, job to keep continuing in your job. Also, you can write down the reasons in the emergency appointment saying like, there's a potential job loss or financial loss or uh, financial loss for the company. You can write down different, different reasons. So if you go to this uh, emergency reasons, it ha this, this website has different reasons that are listed that work for doctors, students, H4 people, also IT, um, IT working for non-healthcare. Uh, so different, different uh, uh, visa, I mean, different, different uh, profiles, basically. Let's say if someone is working for IT for VMware, so that guy, so we listed these reasons based on whatever that worked for the previous clients. So you can try to follow similar formats and then uh, try to you know, um, apply for the emergency appointment. So coming to the starting of the process, you start the, you fill the DS-160, you don't need to fill it completely. Uh, then you register your profile. Uh, let's say your CGA profile from India or your home country might be different from Mexico. So if you, if you already paid the visa fee for home country, if you need to attend visa interview in Mexico, then you need to pay the visa fee again and restart the entire process. You can have multiple appointments in home country as well as Mexico in case if you need. Um, also, uh, you'll be registering your profile and paying the visa fee. We can help you with that. Uh, also, uh, you need to book the non-emergency appointments. Just your DS-160, you can start with any location and then uh, based on wherever you get your appointment dates, you can go to that location. Also, the same thing, emergency appointment, you can request your emergency, you can book the non-emergency appointments at any location and then you need to request for the emergency appointment. Emergency appointment can be at any location, but Try to choose the locations which are working better for, you know, based on the visa category, right? Uh, so I, usually we rate each location based on the approval rates. Uh, I'm going to talk about that as well. Uh, so try to choose the locations which are, let's say even if I'm, if I'm near Phoenix, right? And if I, uh, Nogales Consulate is pretty nearby to me, but they're not approving emergency appointments. Let's say if I, so don't stick to what's convenient for you to travel or anything. So it's better to choose the locations where you have possibility to get the emergency appointment, right? So that way you're not losing the money that you're paying uh, by trying at a location which is not giving emergency appointment. At the same time, it's not like, let's say hundred people apply for the emergency appointment. They don't give hundred uh, emergency appointment for hundred people. They give it only for you know 80 or 70 people and the remaining 30 people, they get a standard response saying, uh, currently, they're not giving emergency appointments. Uh, currently, they're giving only emergency appointments or appointments only for the local nationals. So that is a standard uh, reply from the consulate uh, for any emergency appointment request that they reject, right? So coming to the non-emergency appointments, let me talk about it more. Uh, recent, I mean, uh, initially, the Mexico City started giving these non-emergency appointments. Also, next is Hermosillo started these non-emergency appointments. Uh, and third one is... Monterey, they've been slowly opening these non-emergency appointments and New Orlando, they have some uh, random uh, non-emergency appointments, these four locations. 
And the next location will be, I think, Metamaras also. Few clients were able to book the non-emergency appointments. So we have all the we have the accommodation, transportation service in all the locations. That way, uh, you don't need to worry about the safety aspect. Also, be care in case if you if you've been to Mexico or if you're a good traveler, uh, you've been to multiple countries. But if you're traveling to Mexico, please be, make sure that your uh, belongings are safe. Um, uh, recently, we had a client who lost, who came with family to Mexico City. He finished everything. He's very lucky, and he got the passport next after visa interview. He's very happy and on cloud nine, and uh, just about to board the flight. Uh, I mean, uh, he he went to the airport and then. Uh, uh, his kid need to eat some food and all that and see he just sat down outside and then uh, the bag that has the passport he kept it just um, below his, I know uh, below the chair or something and then uh, all of a sudden within I think next 20 seconds or 25 seconds he lost it with all the passports right then he need to apply again for uh, the passport and all that stuff so please be careful in case if you're traveling on your own uh, in case if you're coming along with us and usually our transportation team will take care of your belongings. Um, so please, please be careful while you travel on your own. Uh, if you're with us, then uh, we can we can help you to keep belongings safe and help you with the safe transportation and all that. So uh, coming to, yeah, non-emergency appointments, uh, those are the locations which started at least. And then eventually most of the uh, remaining consulates will start opening up these non-emergency appointments. Coming to the emergency, um, uh, let, and also, let me speak about what is the different timelines of each consulate giving the passport, right? New Alido, they're giving the passport uh, within one to five days after visa interview. If they're not using DHL, uh, it, it always depends on the passport. I mean, the consulate officer, how they want to give you a passport back. If they give you a passport, if, if they give you a slip with uh, date and timing, that means your pickup passport pickup will be next day. If they, if they give you a DHL uh, slip, then it will be like, four to five days or three to five days within three to five days after visa interview to get your passport. Nogales usually gives you the passport uh, the same day after visa interview or next day, mostly. Tijuana is by default is giving the passport next day after visa interview. Metamaras they give uh, after two days after visa interview uh, by DHL. Sirat uh, Juarez, they're taking recently a lot of time, like in between five to seven. They're not giving the passport uh, in person. They're giving it to DHL and it's taking like five to seven business days to get the passport. Coming to the Monterey location, this has been a very good standard location for getting the passport next day after visa interview. Sometimes you can request even for the same day in case if you're attending visa interview on Friday, then you can request on the same day. If you have any emergency, then you can request on the same day. Hermosillo, has, Hermosillo also has been good. They're giving the passport next day after visa interview by default at uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Mexico City, yeah, the, this, this city, yeah, they opened a lot of uh, non-emergency appointments and a lot of people started attending in uh, May and June. The timeline keeps varying. Sometimes uh, some clients get passport, you know, next day after visa interview, uh, that, that's the soonest. Sometimes it's even taking like a seven to 10 business days also in some cases. Uh, we had clients who attended on June 28th or 29th. They got the passports yesterday. Uh, you can calculate the number of days, right? So, uh, so please be ready. Uh, in case if you're going to Mexico City, the timeline might vary between uh, six to seven or eight business days after the visa interview. Um, please don't be under the expectation that you, you everyone will get the passport next after visa interview. It always depends on the uh, consulate officer who is interviewing you. So yeah, please, while you all go to the visa interview, please be uh, respectful as well as uh, uh, please be careful while you talk to the visa officer. Uh, they can simply put you on a 221G where you don't have, you don't, you, you can't do anything. It's just like a black box, right? So please be respectful to the visa officers. Some clients, uh, I mean, you know, it's not like everyone can uh, can be the same, right? So some have a little bit of more patience, and some don't have patience, and they want everything to be done as soon as possible. But you know, the officers might be dealing with multiple uh, folks, either from the local or uh, the third country nations or whatever it is. Uh, sometimes if you poke them and yeah, they're going to make it more worse for you or uh, your upcoming clients. So uh, right now, I think that might have happened at Mexico City and they've been uh, uh, taking a lot of time, like five to seven days uh, to give the passport back. So uh, yeah, please, please be respectful to the visa officer that way you get your passport soon. Um, 
Also, let me talk about what are the different 221G timelines and uh, what are the visa approvals and denials. So Mexico, and uh, from past four years, we are able to support close to 18,000 plus people. Uh, in that, I can count on my fingers the number of people that got denied of the visa, let's say uh, four or five, and then uh, the remaining most of the people get approvals. So uh, as long as your profile is clear, um, as long as you don't have any, uh, uh, even people who has uh, speeding tickets or uh, DUI history or uh, even petty theft cases or anything, even they came to Mexico, got their visa stamp. Um, as I, I, I interact with a lot of our clients, so I, I have a lot of information. Uh, if anyone, is, I mean, if anyone of you have any issues with your profile, then you can talk to me and I can guide you with uh, whatever the knowledge that I have to choose the location which is best for your case uh, based on your profile. Right. Uh, coming to the yeah, denials, yeah, like I said, very, very rare, but uh, please, please try to get Mexican visa in case if your profile has any issues or um, also, um, what is what is the key? I mean, how many people do get uh, these 221 years? What is the average clearance timeline? Um, let's say if out of 40 or 50 people, let's say uh, three or four people gets 221G or something, then the average timeline to clear 221G is between five to seven days. Uh, PIMS check, it clears within one to two days. Um, also, service check, it's usually for the students or uh, not, not students, whoever completed the master's or doing the second master's and discontinued it. Uh, it's, the service check usually takes two to three days. Uh, there is another check, another security check, DS5535, which might take like two weeks, two weeks to two months also in some cases. Uh, but DS535, most of the case, uh, you know, our Muslim brothers who has name with Muhammad or Mohammed, right? So, uh, or someone is from a Muslim country, uh, they have, uh, which comes under the common name thing. Um, so they might get that 221. So please be careful in case if your name has any one of the, those Muhammad or Muhammad. Um, so uh, DS535, that is the one that takes a lot of time in some cases. Uh, recently, I think one of our client got that and um, luckily, uh, he was able to enter into uh, USA based on that automatic evaluation. Basically, that doesn't apply in case if you attend visa interview, but you can always talk to the CBP officers and uh, request an entry into USA. And once that clears, then you'll be able to go back uh, uh, and get your visa stamped uh, in Mexico. Right. Uh, so that's about the 221Gs, that's about the denials. Um, I spoke about most of the locations, passport return timelines. And which location uh, is giving more emergency appointment? I already spoke. Monitoring is mostly for the students, uh, also uh, for the doctors and doctors, researchers, scientists. Uh, mostly, you can apply in Tijuana, Monterrey, Valladolid, uh, Merida, and uh, Mexico City. Keep, keep that as the last option because due to the passport rating timeline as of now. Uh, also, uh, New Orlando, they've been good. I mean, some, some for some cases, they do give these emergency appointments. Sometimes they don't. So it's not like um, each consulate is, I mean, in some cases, yeah, they, they do behave uh, each each time separately. So um, based on your profile, you can request for emergency appointment at different locations. Um, coming to the Ciudad Juarez location, yeah, their passport I mean, is like five to seven days. I think, I think, yeah, that's all the information that I want to share. Um, uh, let me take the questions from the chat. So if anyone has any questions, let me, yeah, please post it in, in the chat and I'm going to take the questions. I'm going to go for the first one. Uh, US Madhavi, uh, US visa with expiring in August and can travel in August second week, yes. Before your US visa is expiring, you can still travel to Mexico. You don't need any Mexican visa. So there's a question from Venkat. I have a valid Canadian visitor visa and expired USA F1 visa with a valid I-7. So does this work for my H1B stamp in Mexico? Embassies? Yes. If you have Canadian visitor visa, you don't need any Mexican visa. Even if you go to the Mexican visa, they'll say, hey, you have Canadian visitor visa, so you don't need Mexican visa. That's what the Mexican embassy will tell you. There's a question from Arvind. I don't have valid stamped visa. I'm on I-797. What are my options to get the stamping done in Mexico? So based on what I spoke, either you're going to choose the border locations or interior locations. If you're coming to the border location, you don't need any Mexican visa, but it's always better to carry. Uh, interior locations to fly, yes, you must need some sort of visa. Yes, Canadian visa visa uh, works to enter into, I mean, fly to Mexico. 
So there's a question from a guest, which location is good for H4 I-94 extension if H4 has valid visa on her passport? Yeah, let me talk about another topic, which is a lot of H4 uh, folks or H1B might be interested for their spouse, right? So there are like two scenarios. The scenario one is uh, I'm on H4 visa, my uh, H4 stamping in the passport is expired, but my I-94 is still valid. Uh, my spouse H1B extension got approved. Can I go to any US-Mexico border uh, and then renew my I-94? If your visa stamping in the passport is expired, H4 stamping in the passport is expired, there is a very less possibility to get the I-94 renewal done based on what I saw among our clients who've been to the either Lido, Texas or Otemisa borders, right? The second case scenario is, let's say my H4, H4 stamping in the passport is still valid, either even at least for next two to three days or two to three months, whatever it is. Um, also my I-94 is still valid. My spouse, I, H1B I-797 got extended. Can I go to, yeah, I can go to uh, either, you know, previously we guided a lot of clients to go to Lido, Texas, uh, but like uh, it always depends on the CBP officers who are reviewing your request, uh, whether they can do the H4 related I-94 renewal based on your spouse I-797 or not. So. It, it always depends on their mood or if that person is good, then they're going to simply do that. But recently, I think they all are on the same page, the CBP office, and they're not renewing much of the I-94s for the H-4 who are just going there for the H-4 related uh, you know, I-94 extension, not for the visa stamping, uh, I-94 extension. So uh, maybe at this point of time, avoid Larido. That's what I would say. Uh, a lot of people are going to Ote Mesa borders, uh, California or San Isidro borders, so even, even there, right? Um, so sometime, maybe, maybe later, they might stop stop doing it. So you, when you go there for the I-94 renewals, if they're not doing it, just try to request them in a pleasing way or a pleading way, whatever it is. Uh, don't, don't fight against them. If you're going to fight against them, it, it's going to make it worse for you as well as for the upcoming folks, right? So just give it a try. Even if it is not at that border, just try it at another border. Uh, so that way you can uh, request for I-94 extension. You can try for OTA MISA. Uh, if you need any guidance, then we can help you to guide you through the, through the process. There's a question from Shaquille. Will they check my passport visa stamp if I cross the border by bus Greyhound at Larido? Yeah, it always depends on the, you know, Mexican immigration office. Uh, few times they might not check. Few times, yeah, they might ask, stop and check and for the visa and then they might stop you from uh, one client, I think last month. Uh, she wanted to travel by bus on her own as F1 student, and then uh, she got stopped by the Mexican immigration due to the lack of visa. And then um, uh, she called us, and we, we have to arrange the transportation from there to Monterey. She finished the stamping and then able to fly back. So while you go by car, usually you don't get, I mean, uh, usually our transportation team comes from the Monterey and uh, picks up the clients at New Alert and they drive them to uh, Monterey and let them help them with the local transportation and then finish the stamping and they'll be able to fly back to USA, right? So yeah, if you're going by bus, obviously it goes to the Mexican immigration and then uh, it always depends on them whether they want to allow you or not. So how to get a Mexican visa? Can we take our kid to consulate along with us who is a US citizen? Yes, you can take the US citizen kid along with you as long as they're like less than seven years or six years old. Um, also how to get a Mexican visa? It's in-person, by in-person. Uh, different consulates in Mexico has different uh, I mean, mostly they take uh, only by appointments. In some cases you can stop by, but try to uh, call them and try to get information. If not, if they're not responding, then try to visit them and ask them for uh, what is the latest details, how you can get appointment or whether you can stop by. Try to go with all the documentation that way. If they're in good mood, then you can just simply request for uh, the stamping immediately. So there's a question from Venkat. Uh, any special cases like 221G for candidates with regular CPT, D1 CPT in their attempt for F1 H1 B stamp? No, it doesn't really differ whether you're on D1 CPT or regular CPT. It doesn't really matter for your uh, first time H1B stamping. So there's a question from Arti. I was talking about my son's H4 visa. I have an appointment for November, but the issue now is my son's H4 is getting expired in September, but appointment is in November uh, 25th and 28th in Monterey. I doubt his extension will get approved by then but I received his visa extension receipt number and I still take him to my appointment and uh, get his visa. Uh, please remember uh, H4 will always, or even any other dependents will always get stamped based on the primary candidates I-797, right? 
So let's say I'm on H4. I've been, I'm in USA for past 10 years. Let's say I, I, I came into US in 20, let's say 2014, right? And until now, I'm going to stamping now, right? So then I need to show on what document basis did they stay in USA, right? So it will be my I-539s. So you can just carry that along with you to show that you stayed in USA legally, right? And uh, if you have applied a recent extension, it didn't get approved, don't worry. You carry all the remaining I-539s and then uh, your receipt number and you, uh, well, for the H4 stamping to H4 to get stamping done, you'll be using your primary candidates I-797. That number is crucial. That's what you'll be entering for the H4 stamping. So RT, so you don't need to worry about the pending uh, approval from USCIS. All you need to do is just simply carry your spouse I H1 B related I-797, the receipt number, and then you'll be able to get the stamp I mean, stamping done in Mexico. Can we not fly to Mexico if I get Mexican visa? If yeah, if you get Mexican visa visa, you can directly fly to Mexico. But to get a Mexican visa, you need to have a document from USCIS approved on your name. So if the H-4 is still waiting for the H-4 document from USCIS, then there is no way that H-4 can get the Mexican visa. In that case, you can you, know, you can come to the borders and then we can help you with the transportation to Monterey or whatever the location. You finish the stamping and then you get the FMM card stamped at the Mexican immigration and then you'll be able to fly back to USA. There's a question from Shakil. I have an I-20 valid until May 2023. Will they renew my visa stamping at Monterey? Yes, you can definitely renew your phone stamping in Mexico. Uh, this is a question from Arun. Can you please mention about H-1B visa renewal with expired USA visa, right? So uh, let's say, uh, what, what is the advantage of uh, going to the visa stamping with uh, the current visa that is still valid in the passport versus expired, right? If it is still valid, um, let's say in case of any 221G or anything, you can still come back based on the existing uh, visa, right? Uh, let's say if you're going with expired US visa, then to fly to any of these locations, you need some sort of either visitor visa, but if you're going by land, you don't need that. So, I mean, there's not really 95% of the clients who come to Mexico, they come with expired US visa to renew their visa in Mexico. So there's a question from Shakil. Uh, if I'm denied an entry at the ladder border, can I come back to US immediately or they will hold me? Yeah, uh, you can use automatic revalidation rule to come back to USA in case if you're going by land and uh, let's say if your appointments are getting canceled or you're unable to make an entry into Mexico, then you'll be able to come back by using the automatic revalidation rule. So there's a question from Samsung SM. Uh, how about the H1B stamping reviews at Sierra who has a location on emergency appointments? Uh, approvals have been good in who are his location uh, the only thing is getting the passport is taking like five to seven uh, business days in some case. So Mexico City and Juarez, those two are kind of the same timeline at this point of time. We hope that uh, they, 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 be, they become better. So Adash Patil, uh, does the dependence kids middle school starting in August considered as an emergency? Yes, you can try to. So let's say uh, we had clients who, who were on H1B and H4 or L1, L2, different, different visas. Uh, if they have any kids who are going to school, you can try to leverage their, you know, education or the school as a reason to try the emergency for entire family, right? So we had clients who, uh, I mean, whose kid got uh, um, uh, got some. Uh, they they need to uh, visit a, I think, business school or something in uh, London, uh, and then uh, he got he got, uh, he got admission or something over there, or whatever it is. And he need to go, um, yeah. so for, for, for that particular person to get the, uh, get his uh, H4 visa stamped or F, uh, right? So their entire family was able to get the emergency based on uh, that uh, school or college as the main reason. So if you have the kids who are going to school, then you know, try to leverage that as a reason to uh, request the emergency appointments. Uh, how much time it is getting, it's taking to get back the passport in New Mexico, uh, Mexico City. I always spoke about that. Uh, please take a uh, look at this video again, please. So I have a non-emergency appointment in Q1 in August. Do you recommend changing it? Yeah, one more important information is T1 is not allowing any non-emergency appointments at this point of time. So even if you have, if you get any non-emergency appointment, please cancel that. T1 is only allowing these emergency appointments. We had clients who, even this month and last month, who were able to get this non-emergency appointment, which opened randomly. They've been to the ASC. They canceled the appointment, they came back to 
to USA, if they have I-94 still attached to the, you know, I-797, you still I-797, then uh, you can come back to USA without using your automatic evaluation rule. So they were able to come back uh, using that rule uh, because they canceled the appointment. But if you don't have I-94, then yeah, don't, uh, what I mean is, yeah, don't go to Tijuana. Uh, in case if appointments get canceled, you won't be able to come back to USA. So avoid Q1 for non-emergency appointments and for emergency for the doctors, yes, it's a good location. Uh, for uh, Also, one more option that changed from uh, March 2022 is uh, there's a question that asks about are you a permanent resident in Mexico, right? So that's the option. All our clients who have attended from past four months or five months since March or April, uh, March and April, June, July, right? Uh, they all just selected that option and then move forward and then uh, went ahead and booked whatever the appointment dates and then requested the emergency appointments. Once they got it approved, then they attended and got the visa stamped and came back. So that that option didn't really impact anything. Only I think T1 got impacted by that, saying that they're canceling these appointments. That's what they're doing. And the remaining remain locations are good as uh, at this point of time. So as a question from Ankit for the emergency appointment, what is the process? Is there any option in DS 160 or site to choose the emergency appointment option? So if the emergency appointment request gets it, can we request it again immediately? So I'm going to explain briefly. You fill the DS 160, raise your profile, pay the visa fee, uh, request, I mean, book the non-emergency appointment at any location. It doesn't need to be the same location where you will be requesting emergency appointment. You can choose any location and then request emergency appointment. Right. Uh, once you book the non-emergency appointment, you click continue. There will be an option called request expedite. You click that and then you submit that request. Um, make sure that your reason is convincing. For that, you can use this particular page. Uh, you can search for different different words or reasons or students or whatever it is. Just search, and you'll be able to find the reason that work for others. Uh, sometimes it, most of the cases, it, it works for you but it always depends on the person who is reviewing your emergency appointment request. So if it gets rejected, you, you apply through the portal. If it gets rejected, um, it's just only one time request. So you cannot apply it again. In some cases, uh, our clients were able to send emails to consulate asking them to reactivate it, uh, reactivate the portal again so they can request again. So a few consulates like Tijuana, Monterey, New Orlando, uh, if they see the reason is too con convincing, if they attach any supporting documentation to that emails and request for reconsidering. Sometimes they enable that portal again and you submit the request again. Uh, so yeah, that's how it is. The alternative option is to send email and then request them, ask them to reconstruct. Like I said, uh, it's not like 100% that you'll get emergency appointment. It's just the chance that you need to take in case if you have that emergency or something. And also no one is forcing you to uh, come to the Mexico for the visa stamping or anything. We're just to, here to help you. So if you need that help, just reach out to us um, uh, and then we'll be able to help you and guide you with whatever the possible details and the knowledge that we have. So also I have a DS-160 already submitted in India can, but can't secure an appointment. Is it okay to submit a new DS-160 in Mexico? Yes, you can. Website is different. Um, there's a question from what are the chance of getting a non-emergency appointment at a new location uh, next two months? Uh, at, at this point of time, if you need to attend the appointments in the next two months, mostly possible by trying for the emergency appointment or you need to keep checking more frequently uh, for the non-emergency appointments to open in some locations, like I said, like four to five locations, Mexico City, Hermosillo, Monterey, New Orlando, uh, these locations have been opening these non-emergency appointments. So you can, uh, you need to keep checking more frequently to get appointments in the next two months or either your emergency appointment reason needs to be uh, convincing enough for them to approve your request. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a question from Bankit. Is a Mexico visa uh, like uh, US beyond B to 10 years? Usually it's just for 10, six months, but in few locations like New York and uh, Phoenix, Mexican embassies, they give it valid for 10 years for the Mexican visa visa. So when there's a question from Kartik, when we fill the DS-160, we select a potential visa location as metamorphosis, but we got the appointment in Mexico City. It won't be an issue. You can still use the same DS-160 for any location in Mexico. Also, if you, you can request emergency appointment at any location as well. So do we need a visa to Hermosillo? If you're flying to Hermosillo, you don't, you need, you must need some sort of visa visa. If you're uh, going by land, you don't need that. Um, 
So there's a question from uh, from C. Are children allowed to use consulate? What is the visa required for U.S. born kids? U.S. born kids don't need anything. So they just carry their passports or their birth certificate, whatever it is, and then uh, they can allow the kids along with you as long as they're like less than six or seven years old. Um, what is an I-94 renewal? Since my J-1 is expired, do I need to do that? Uh, I, I think J-1 doesn't have anything to do with I-94, uh, just like F-1 students, I believe. There's just something for uh, H-4 and H-1B, all those visa categories. Does Mexico land entry need FMM? Yeah, you can simply fill FMM card online. We can post you the official FMM card link, fill that. They're like bulk of FMM card links, uh, Mexico tourist card and .com. They're like third party, don't, don't, fill, don't use them. Just ask us for the official link. So what is the best uh, location for first time F1 to H1B stamping? Monterrey. So hotels to stay in Mexico City, preferably close to Juarez area. Yeah, Mexico City, we have, uh, last year we held uh, close to 250 to 300 a set of parents who came from India to Mexico, stayed there for 15 days and then entered into USA. So there we have good setup of the hotels where we can host you as well as uh, they like Indian restaurants um, as well, uh, where we can connect you with them and they'll deliver the food to your hotel. Um, so we, we, can, we can help you uh, as part of our services, we can help you with that. So best location for Owen visa, if you're a doctor, then T1. So I want to hire your service from A to Z. Can you please share your contact number? Yeah, please visit our website and then just click this WhatsApp icon and then you'll be able to contact us. There's a question from Chrome. Uh, my H-1B visa expired. Is it good to attend uh, visa stamping in Mexico now? Uh, is visa is expired in 2017. Yes, definitely. You can uh, attend visa stamping. We had clients who didn't go to India since 2007, 8, 9, 10, uh, 10 a lot of people, 11 a lot of people. So it doesn't really matter when was your last time visa stamping, but to go to the visa stamping now, make sure that you carry all your connecting I-797s or receipts or whatever it is. The question from Shaker, uh, non-emergency appointments not available at any location at the moment until January, what are the realistic chances of appointments opening up at what locations? Like I said, right, um, the random dates have been opening, but from I think past uh, two weeks, they've been a little bit slow. But before that, uh, a lot of people were able to book these uh, non uh, random non emergency appointments. Um, so maybe hopefully things might become better, and then there might be a possibility for uh, random slots slots to get open. Uh, I got my last H one B stamp in Metamorphs. Is there a chance to request for renewal of my H one B at same location or urgent basis? Metamorphs, yeah, it's it's a good location for definitely good location for non emergency one, but for emergency. Uh, recently, they haven't given any emergency appointments, so uh, you can you can choose other location for now. But uh, for non-emergency, definitely it's a good location. So there's a question from Raj. Uh, I have a question. I'm in North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, and don't have a Mexican visa. Which route should I take? And would our team take care of transportation accommodation as well? Yes, uh, our service includes once you contact us by WhatsApp, you'll join our WhatsApp group and uh, we'll share whatever the latest visa and interview questions in the groups partners for posting uh, you know multiple messages because whoever joins the next they, they can't see anything from i wish uh, i wish whatsapp has that option just like telegram where you'll be able to just new person will be able to see the whole conversation but whatsapp unfortunately doesn't have that uh, so we need to keep posting multiple times and uh, yeah that sends a lot of notifications and all that so please please uh, pardon us for that Yes, we do help with, uh, you know, we create an individual group for you and then uh, we'll help you with uh, all the guidance that you need. Uh, we help a lot of clients. So sometimes we might miss helping uh, you with uh, appropriate information in some cases, but yeah, please remind us again and again, uh, because our team is very limited, like four to five members or six members. And uh, sometimes uh, please, please don't message in the individual groups that create for you after 10 PM, because our team takes off at, uh, at 10 PM. So if you message us for anything after 10 p.m., then no one will be there to respond. And the next day morning, uh, please ping us again. That way your chat comes to the top. That way we will be able to respond to you. But in case if we uh, fail to respond to you, please uh, just message us again. That way your message comes to the top and we'll help you. In case if we didn't help, uh, yeah, please uh, partner us. Please. Because you get a lot of uh, mails, I mean, messages and all that. So change of status, F1 to H1, I know you said people are getting it done. However, it's a gray area or guaranteed to work. I mean, it's guaranteed to work. It worked for many people. Uh, so can I have two DS-160? Yes, you can have two DS-160. Do you know on average how much time it's taking to get a Mexican tourist visa? Usually it takes just 
one day one mostly one day within uh, four to five hours or uh, two to three hours you'll be able to get your mexican visa so what is the process of getting a mexican visa visa uh, this is there in our website just go there and then you'll be able to see a page called mexico visitors visa and that can help you to understand the process so also they have uh, okay i have a valid b1 b2 on a expired passport yes you can still use that to uh, fly to mexico once you get your uh, new passport i know i think uh, i think that that's all for now i have a lot of uh, uh, questions here um, yeah but please please click click this whatsapp link, uh, link and then contact us i'm going to take another session probably tomorrow just for i don't explain anything about the service and all that and all the location because this video covers that uh, tomorrow i'll take another session strictly for the question and answers okay probably at the same time or e even before that so i need to leave and uh, thank you everyone for joining and um, sorry for cutting this meeting short like 15 minutes uh, right now it's uh, 9:45 pm we start the meeting at 9 So I, I'm. We are going to answer more questions tomorrow, as well as just message in, in WhatsApp by clicking this link, and I will help to answer most of the questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining, and uh, good night.